surface replacement because only the worn out surfaces of the knee are replaced by the artificial parts. I always consider this like a dental crown. We put the crown here on, on the femur and you see this is still a normal knee. It relies on the collateral ligaments, on the capsule, on the kneecap and it behaves with this kind of stability and elasticity like a normal knee. Many patients ask me how does this kind of prosthesis work in the body. I'm going to show you in an animation. The knee is not only the biggest but also the most complicated joint of the human body. During walking and jumping it is loaded with a sevenfold body weight. The most important structure of the knee joint is its cartilage surface. Due to trauma, overload and genetic disorders, the cartilage surface might be damaged. The patient feels that. He feels pain, he feels inflammation, he feels a limitation of the range of motion and at the end a bad gait pattern. In this situation, the only solution for the patient is a so-called total joint replacement. Modern total joint replacement does not mean that a total joint is replaced. Only the damaged cartilage surfaces are replaced by an implant. This is the reason why a patient can do his normal activities and also sports after total joint replacement today. Many of my patients ask me how do you get this implant inside of me. I'm going to show you in a minute. Don't be afraid of my assistant and my scrub nurse wearing the typical astronaut's helmet system. This is another means against infections because the air of the surgeon is filtered away by this helmet. For the operative technique I have prepared another animation for you. The patient lies in supine position. The knee is fully flexible, it is draped with sterile garment. The skin incision is a longitudinal incision right over the middle of the kneecap. The kneecap is elevated to the side. This gives me full overview over the complete joint. When I start with the femur, I remove with a precision saw exactly that amount of the damaged cartilage and bone which is later replaced by the prosthetic component. In this case it's exactly 9 millimeters. The same surgical step is then performed on the tibia. Also here exactly that amount is taken off the cartilage and bone which is later replaced by the tibial part of the prosthesis. Now the knee is taken into full extension. A spacer block is positioned and the knee alignment and the extension and the ligament tension is checked. Also in 90 degree of flexion this spacer block gives me the later position of the femoral component. The next saw block is used to remove the anterior and posterior part of the femoral condyles as well as some minor diagonal cuts are performed. After removal of these bone parts, the femoral side is ready to take the prosthetic device. In most patients also the kneecap suffers from osteoarthritis. A small layer of cartilage and bone is removed 
there are three anchorage holes drilled into the original bone. The kneecap is covered by a trial implant as well as the femoral component, the tibial component and a trial inlay. The knee is now checked for the range of motion and the stability over this range of motion. Additional drill holes improve the fixation of the prosthetic device into the femur and also at the tibial side. After removal of the trial components, the original prosthetic components are glued with bone cement. The advantage of bone cement in total knee replacement is that the components are immediately stable and the bone surface are sealed by the bone cement. An inlay between femur and tibia is positioned which consists of highly stable polyethylene. The kneecap is reduced and the range of motion of the joint is checked once more. The surgical procedure is finished now. The patient is transferred to the recovery room.